Chips. Rub it in. Rub it in. You're so you're never too young. Don't let your children, grandchildren, get overweight and do all. You think? Teach them how to eat right. We're the sickest country in the world, guys. We are. Have you seen these inflammatory diseases we have? Mm-hmm. Arthritis, all that stuff. God, it, it's just it's so simple if you do things. So you can get better. Roger Cook. So can I ask in, in for this? So Be with all you that two. you've studied and known and all the stuff you showed us, why the beamer in your opinion? Well, because it gets all this good stuff to the cell. The microcirculation is the best thing. It's come on across. I think it's the greatest scientific invention since the genome. I think the genome may have been a little better because I got computer chips that tell me everything, where everything is. I can splice it out, but I can't put a new one in. Right. My buddies at Duke are using stem cell shots. And right. They might be able to do it. But that's that's what you got to do. Yeah. Um, in terms of what Morphine does on the cell, we talk about the microcirculation and the enzymes and the ways. Because the beamer creates an intensity and it's very comparable to the electromagnetic field. Yes. I think it can deliver the blood. And you remember, the Bible says life is in the blood, right. and it's going to deliver all the life sustaining for this metabolism. Right. Those chemical reactions have got to have the right food. Right. And if you don't, it's going to cause the enzyme to be abnormal, which is going to cause sickness. Right. And you, you just can't do that. Okay. You're never too old to exercise. This is for me and you, okay? Are you older than me? I'm 74 here. I got him. Yeah. He's a young kid. Okay. <laughs> never too old to exercise. Oh, man, I've got some letters from people you wouldn't believe telling me what they did. I had a letter from a lady from Los Angeles. She wrote me a letter. She says, I heard you speak, and I was probably 78 years old. And I started walking, I started jogging. And she said, at 84 years old, I was the oldest participant to finish the Los Angeles Marathon. She says, I do 40 sit-ups and 40 push-ups every day. Is that enough? I said, no, I'm rounded off at 50. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Just kidding. You're never too old to exercise. And she said, oh, by the way, I won three people of Christ on my 84th birthday. That's why you do this game. That's the only reason you're doing this. So you can serve God longer and better. That's your whole purpose in life after you accept Jesus as your Christ. You're never too old. I met a guy named Larry, and he got through speaking. I ran up to the podium. I said, Larry, what do you do for exercise? He says, I run 6.7 miles in this park every day. I, I can do that. I could. <laughs> he says, then I go to work as a waiter in Fisherman's Wharf. He's a legend the waiter. He says, I can do that, but he, Larry's 106 years old. He says, I hold the world's record for the for the 100 yard dash for men over 100. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to beat him over. We're going to break that record. Right. <laughs> okay. Now, no matter what your excuse is, <laughs> I don't think you got a good excuse for not exercising and taking good care of yourself, developing your wealth. 
I was in the Boston Marathon. I went up to see it and I saw these runners cross the finish line. Man, I had chills all over me. The guy that was running in front didn't have any feet. It wasn't these real pretty things. It was wooden prosthesis back those days. Yeah. And he had run 26 miles, 385 yards. And he was holding on to a rope and the guy running behind him was completely blind. And they'd run together. Man, what kind of excuse?